Hello, this is Robert Baker with Space Age Consulting, uh, here to give you another camera review. Uh, this time we're reviewing the Sony FDR AX100, which is their new prosumer level 4K camera. Why 4K? Well, because think about it, it's more resolution, it's more detail, it's, it's just more. But do we really need it? We can't stream 4K, we have no 4K media just yet, where can we use it? Well, as a comparison, I wanted to put the Canon 60D up against the FDR AX100, my trusty Canon 60D. You have to understand that this um, is not an apples to apples comparison, because a DSLR is used really in different situations than would be this prosumer level camera. However, when you think about it, the price points are just about the same. So sometimes it's easier when it's time to decide what should I buy, how much money do I have. Really, the purpose is how these two compare along the same price range. Now, they serve different purposes. Uh, DSLRs are great for um, short bursts of recording. They have a better dynamic range than most of your prosumer video cameras. The larger sensor gives you a better depth of field. Uh, however, in this case, the Sony AX100 uh, comes with a one-inch sensor, which means you should have uh, opportunity for great depth of field. Um, you should have opportunities for uh, better ability to shoot in low light, things of that nature. So we're just going to do a quick outdoor comparison of the two and see how they come out. What I was able to do was put both cameras uh, sharing uh, the same tripod so that you'll be able to compare side-by-side -side imaging. I didn't do any color correction and the Canon 60D is using the standard picture style. Um, you can see here that the Canon, which is on the left side, has a bit more contrast, even with the standard picture style, uh, and that helps the color to pop just a bit. That should be easy to fix in post-production. Here you will be able to see the um, zoom capabilities of the AX100. Now, on the Canon, it had a Tamron 17-50 to lens, uh, which wouldn't have the same zoom capabilities of the 18x zoom of the AX100. But what I did was try to keep them as close uh, as possible uh, so you can get a good comparison, a fair test between the two. Here we're going to zoom in just a little bit on the ducks to see the color difference. You can also see here, once again, the contrast plays a huge role in the, uh, the color reproduction uh, between the two cameras. And a little bit of gamma correction can fix that problem. I wanted to get a good impression of the zoom of the, the 18x zoom of the AX100 and also test out its stability control. You can see right here I'm about 200, 300 feet away um, from the, the pier, but as I zoom out you can see how far away I am and how close you can get with this camera. So right now here we're going to take a look at two things from the AX100. We're going to be looking at color reproduction here. And I think it does a fairly good job of capturing and reproducing colors. Uh, you can see that from the multicolored building. Um, and we're also going to be taking a look at the depth of field that this one inch sensor can um, create. Uh, that's one of the great things about larger sensors is the depth of field. So I'm just going to be doing some focus pulling, um, setting the camera to manual focus first, and then pulling between a near and a far object. One area where the AX100 really falls flat is with its automatic focus. It takes a long time for you to focus if you're zoomed in. A very long time. Um, this is one area where I, I believe they're going to have to improve or we're just going to have to shoot on manual focus and deal with it ourselves. Image stabilization when zoomed in is not that great, um, but then it's probably on par for a, a camera in this same price range. Um, even with this one inch sensor though, you're gonna get a whole lot of uh, jello effect. Um, 
and that's something you keep in mind this is not a great video camera if you're doing any high speed movements you'll see right here you can see all the jello effect um, that you can get from a fast pan I really wanted to like this camera, you know, a 4K camera in this uh, roughly $2,000 price range. Um, the ability to shoot higher resolution and then get more detail when you down convert to 1080p seemed like a wonderful idea. But there were a couple of issues that just held me back. Ergonomically, the camera just didn't fit my hands very well. I didn't really like all the button placements. The the menu, while pretty good, fairly good, uh, the touchscreen menu wasn't always as responsive. It seemed a bit small uh, for my fingers. Sometimes I'm trying to press one button and I would press something else. Visually, I think the camera does fairly well, and I'm happy that I rented it for an interview that I shot. Um, I may continue to rent it in the future, but for now, I'm going to look to something else to fill the, my 4K needs, hopefully within the same price range. So let us know what you think of our hardware review, uh, if there's things you'd like, there's things you'd like us to cover, and we'll try to provide you with more reviews. We have another one coming up soon of the Canon XA20. I know the camera's been out for a while now, but we finally were able to get our hands on it and put it through its paces. So once again, this is Robert Baker with Space Age Consulting, where we take the technical and make it understandable. Tune in for our next episode.